Welcome everybody. Uh, this webinar organized by the Green European Foundation together with Oikos, the Flemish Green Think Tank. I'm Dirk Holemans, co-president of the Green European Foundation and your host for today. And we are very happy that we have as a uh, speaker today, Sana Fezakans. Sa, mm -hmm. she's the Green Deputy Mayor of Helsinki and she's responsible for social affairs and public health. First, I want to also emphasize that this webinar is part of a series. And it's part of the transnational JEF project called Cities as Places of Hope in Europe. And the reason why we um, are doing this project is that we want to develop a more hopeful, positive perspective on Europe. Because sometimes if you look how the member states are fighting in Brussels, and I don't even want to mention the Brexit, uh, you can get the impression that, yeah, things are not going so great uh, in Europe. But at the same time, if you look at what frontrunner cities are doing, then you really get a view of very progressive, uh, ambitious policies, which are not only uh, written down in paper, but are also implemented. Uh, for instance, last week we had a webinar with people from Amsterdam and Brussels that are implementing the donut model of Kate Roward. Uh, that's also showing that really things are changing. And uh, because we find it very relevant to have front runner cities from all corners from Europe, so to say, I think Helsinki is an obvious choice. I had the pleasure some years ago to visit the city, to talk with Sana, and I was really impressed by the progressive policies being implemented in very different fields, climate policy, uh, education, public health, uh, food, and so on. And therefore, I will not speak myself much longer. And I'm very happy, Sana, to give you the floor to explain us about the policies being developed and implemented in Helsinki. Thank you, Dirk, and uh, hello, everyone, and, and thank you for inviting us. Uh, we are, of course, very happy to tell about Helsinki and, and what we Greens have accomplished and, and also what we aim in the future. It's actually a, a quite interesting time also in Helsinki because we will have elections, uh, the local elections, municipal elections uh, in April, if, of course, uh, nothing uh, with the COVID situation will go very terrible wrong, but we really hope and, and, and are going to organize, uh, every, all our actions are, are geared to, to organize uh, elections in, in uh, some weeks already. And, and of course, it's very interesting uh, time for us, as, as you all know, uh, with democracy being, being very concrete when, when, when the elections are coming up. Um, maybe something about myself first, uh, just to introduce uh, myself, uh, and, and then I have a presentation as well. Uh, hopefully we will get uh, to see that as well, and, and you will all see it. Um, we, um, I'm, I'm a city councillor in Helsinki uh, since 2009, so, so more than 10 years, and I have been in my political uh, actions very focused on education, uh, health and social policies, maybe because of my background, I, I, I have been working in, in different uh, public and non-governmental organizations in, in field of uh, uh, health and uh, social services, uh, most recently before this uh, position. Uh, now I have served as a deputy mayor for almost four years, uh, and this is a full-time position in, in Helsinki. Uh, but before this, I was uh, um, working for Save the Children Finland before that uh, in, in some governmental organizations uh, and, and also uh, in the UN, UNFPA in Ethiopia. So, so both uh, international and, and local actions combined um, and, uh, and uh, very, very happy, of course, now being able to, to put this um, my personal interest and, and I think also very important part of uh, local, local democracy having, being, um, having the good uh, social services and, and taking um, 
progressive social action also in, in, in the cities, um, being able to, to guide this uh, as a deputy mayor. Um, but um, maybe I will tell more um, and, and go now, probably, hopefully you can see my presentation. Yes, yes I, will, I will go more into detail what Helsinki has, uh, what we have done as a, as, as a place of hope. Uh, I think it was a very good uh, uh, title for, for this event. Um, and, and some concrete actions and, and examples of our climate targets, uh, also what we have done in mental health and, and also thinking of healthy food and, and uh, public health in, in general. Let's go to the next. Yes, here is just a, one picture of, um, of one of our health stations in the eastern Helsinki. And uh, I already gave some introductions of my background. Uh, um, so not uh, going to more details on that now, but maybe some details about Helsinki. Not all of you have maybe visited us. I hope after COVID uh, you will have a chance to, to visit uh, here in the northern corner of the European Union. Uh, we are a city of uh, 650,000 inhabitants uh, and we are growing quite fast. Um, we are a um, we are growing city. I think this is very similar to all all capitals in the European Union, many other cities as well, that the growth is, is very, very fast, uh, both coming from, from other parts of Finland, people to come to Helsinki to study, to work, um, um, and of course also from, from outside uh, the borders, to come to study, to work, to seek asylum, many other reasons to, to and, and also in Helsinki we have seen a big change. Um, uh, we compared to many other European cities, um, um, we are not so uh, international uh, when you look at the population, but around 50, 15, 1-5% of our uh, population don't uh, speak other language than, than Finnish or Swedish, which are the official languages. And, and of course that growth is also, or, also taking place. And, and we are very happy also that, uh, um, that Helsinki is, is in many ways um, getting more international and really connected to, to other parts of the world globally. Here are um, all the pictures of green uh, city councillors. Um, we are 21 uh, city councillors from the altogether 85. And we are now uh, the second biggest party in the city council. Uh, and therefore we have two deputy mayors, myself and Anni Sinnemäki, uh, who has, who, who has, uh, who's also our uh, representative now for the, for the position of being also the mayor for the next, uh, next uh, term. And we have a, a very good possibilities because in the other elections last year we, and, and uh, year before when we had the parliamentary election, Greens were the biggest party in Helsinki, uh, so of course we are trying to be the, the the biggest when, and that would mean that we will get the mayor's position. And uh, but if you can see um, from the pictures, we represent uh, Helsinki, different ages, uh, different genders, different backgrounds, but uh, very progressive and and, and very um, very. Uh, um, group with a, with a lot of lot of aims and, and also a lot of uh, uh, energy to trying to to focus on the important things in in the green policies maybe some words also about the covid since it is a it is a crisis that has hit us so hard not only in in europe but also globally and and we know that it, it is also something that we need to focus very much uh, in the coming years um, at the same time as we are trying to create the hope for the citizens. Um, here are the uh, infections uh, rate with the, with the orange uh, color um, and uh, Dolko means uh, in, uh, starting from March uh, 2020, so, so first in the 
in the left hand side you will see the springtime and now now the autumn ending ending in this january of course uh, as you know it's uh, there is no point of really comparing what happened in the springtime and in the autumn we didn't test as much as then as we do now we probably have much much better better picture of of the whole pandemia but in any case um uh, Helsinki has been hit very hard. We we represent 10% of the of the whole country's population, but uh, we represent almost 30% of the all infections. So it has concentrated in the in this capital area. It has concentrated, of course, because we are the most densely populated, and and many other reasons. People also travel a lot, and 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 all that. We we have also the border. Um, to to the to the south to to Estonia, where a lot of uh, traffic uh, and and people um, are uh, also uh, coming here to work and and vice versa. Um, but at the same time, when you compare this to the European map, uh, we know that we have not uh, been hit so hard as many other European countries. Um, we also feel there are uh, certain reasons for it. Uh, we know at, at, at least some part uh, of it is that we were a bit lucky. Um, for instance, in the springtime, uh, our, uh, our winter vacation wasn't that on the same, same weeks as, as our neighbors, so, so the Finns didn't travel um, to the countries, uh, for instance, Italy and Austria, where, where there was a lot of more infections at that time since we didn't have it and they didn't bring it to, to Finland that much. Uh, but of course, I think it is also uh, due to, um, to a very uh, well-working uh, public sector uh, and, and also uh, that we were able to, to do certain actions ahead that it was not too late. We were a bit, uh, bit also ahead um, and, and, and could, um, could um, use that time uh, wisely. Um, but of course, at the same time now, we, we know that it's, the levels have been quite high. Uh, most children are still in the school uh, until they are 15 year old. After that, they have been now for the last two months, they have been uh, travel, um, studying from home. Um, we are also a very digital country, so it works also from home. But of course, we also see that uh, it has created a lot of loneliness. Uh, um, a lot of, um, for instance, hobbies uh, for children, uh, sports, etc. They haven't been. Um, we ha that has been also only organized outside uh, in the winter time. A very, very difficult time. So we are, we're challenging. We're challenged. Uh, you know, at the same time trying to do the right actions, thinking of the the epidemic, and and then uh, also kind of the social consequences. And and we what we also see that. Uh, um, is happening for 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 especially for mental health, um, and then knowing also that we are not uh, in. Luckily, we are not uh, still in the in the very very difficult situation. Um, the the um, uh, infections uh, uh, when you look at it uh, in the in the last uh, fourteen days, uh, they have been around one hundred fifty, uh, which. I'm sure when many many colleagues you from from other European countries, it seems that it's it is actually quite low, but still uh, of course a very difficult one in many cases. Um, but but uh, what uh, is not? Yeah, let's go to the next. Uh, I think uh, this is something that uh, although the the COVID uh, has has hit us hard, uh, the whole Europe. This is something that we need to work on. Uh, in any case, the, the climate action and uh, and Helsinki has set a lot of um, um, aims um, that we will be a carbon neutral city by 2035. Uh, and with the green uh, line, you can see the total emissions starting from 1990 and, and with the orange, uh, the emissions per residence. And, and we are actually going to a very good directions. Um, this uh, now ends to, uh, 2018, but uh, it has actually, we have followed the path um, like that, but we know that, of course, the last uh, reductions are probably the most difficult ones, especially they are difficult uh, for Helsinki, thinking of the, 
the warming and how to produce uh, both electricity and, and uh, how to warm up the houses because we have the very cold winter period here in the north. Uh, in the background you see one of our um, energy sources with a, uh, which still uses uh, coal, uh, but with the uh, decision making uh, that was initiated by the Green Party already some years ago, we will close uh, this one plant uh, in 2024. So already in three years, um, we will need to find uh, different sources. And of course, we have done that already for four years, how to, how, how to uh, not to use coal, but, to, but use um, other um, sources uh, that, that, are, um, uh, that, um, that are carbon neutral. So, so we are working very hard on this, and I, I think uh, with the climate action, we are actually going in a very good direction. And we also ha have been able to, to get also the other parties, since we don't have the majority <laughs> still yet uh, as a Green Party in, in Helsinki. Also, the other, other parties uh, have been uh, able to, to agree on, on this plan. But there are of course some issues where we still uh, need to fight a lot. Uh, let's go to the next. Uh, for instance, the modes of transport. It's something uh, that of course we as the Greens would uh, like to focus more on the uh, sustainable ways of uh, transport, public transport, bicycle walking, which is also more healthy. We know that it's also important from that perspective. Um, but of course, we still have uh, those uh, lobbies, uh, especially for the for the cars from the other parties. But in any case, we have been very, very uh, much able to change these modes of transport. If you, if you can see from 2010 to to 2018, um, the the share, especially the share of walking and and bicycling, it's um, it has gone up both uh, steadily. And, and we have done a lot of uh, infrastructure development and many other things to, to steer this um, development. But the public transportation, of course, very important also to take care uh, that it will be the, the, something that people find attractive and, and use, usable. So let's go to the next. Uh, here is a picture of Helsinki city bike uh, system. Uh, that has been working already uh, some years and what we are very especially proud of that it's it's uh, among the most popular city bike systems in the world so we have invested money on it but also people love to use it uh, they use it a lot as as a way of transport either first uh, one section to the, go by bike to the metro and the, and then uh, maybe change to the tram or or the whole way with with the city bikes, and uh, I think very important part of this is uh, also to get the users to um, to to make uh, make uh, the system working in the way that it's 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 also working for them that they are they are the ones uh, getting a lot of feedback trying to find the. Uh, right places where to put the uh, bikes, etc., and, and and really to make it usable. Then some examples that I think it's it are very important parts of of creating that hope, also creating the trust between citizens. And and uh, here is a picture of uh, of one Helsinki uh, city park where where every summer we have free lunch for all under 16 year olds so all children can come to the to the playgrounds we have 70 uh, 70 different uh, parks uh, with a playground uh, where we have also staff working in there and the city provides warm lunch uh, every every day from monday to friday and it started as you can see already uh, more than 90 years ago, actually, ago. Um, but I think it's some some elements of of really getting important um, important uh, social trust that uh, and and also that uh, for instance small children who 
who are enjoying their summer holidays from the school and, and their parents are still working, they can find the lunch. They can come there alone with their friends. And of course, also for, for other families with the smaller children, they can enjoy the, the, the parks for longer hours. This is something we are very proud of, uh, but we love uh, the, the other food as well. Uh, here is an example from our school lunches. This is something also that we have had forever, uh, more than um, uh, more than more than decades. Uh, th this came actually in legislation after the Second World War, uh, that all the schools have to serve lunch for for all school children. And we find that it's it is very important. It's part of uh, our uh, our social and and uh, social services. Uh, and and the in interesting is that when we see it as a universal right, uh, then it also means that, uh, that uh, everybody is, is entitled, you don't have to apply, you, you people, uh, children are all equal. But we also know that in some schools, for instance, on Mondays, uh, children eat a lot more, so they haven't had done, they haven't received uh, as, as much food as, as others maybe on the weekends. So, so um, it is also important uh, from that aspect. But what is important and interesting from the green point of view, let's go to the next, is that since we have this uh, kind of mass food production from the city, uh, both in schools, day, uh, kindergartens and, and daycare, and, and also in the summertime in the parks, um, we made a decision already 2011 that uh, schools in Helsinki will have a vegetarian day once a week. And then uh, two years ago, we made a, a decision, that we, we voted, and that was a very, uh, very fierce uh, discussion uh, uh, in the beginning, in the, uh, uh, then 10 years ago, but now it actually wasn't. We voted to cut the use of meat and dairy products by half by 2025. And both of these initiatives were done by a green city councillor. I think this uh, also the discussion that it was very, uh, very heavily deba debated then, then um, uh, nine years ago, and now it was more, uh, more easily adjusted means also that this is something that we can uh, we can make kind of these very big structural decisions and, and but we have to start from from somewhere and we have to be also um, courageous enough to to make those goals and and then then very very uh, uh, then it seems to be uh, something that uh, uh, everybody can 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 share okay then um the food, of course, is, is important uh, from other perspective as well. Um, although uh, Finns in general, we are quite uh, proud of our social security system and, and, and the universal services. Uh, we know that we have poverty in Helsinki. We also know that we have unequal situations when, when people also lack even food. Um, and uh, this is a picture from our one of our food aid um, uh, centers. And this is a center actually uh, run by the city, invested by the city, where all the um, disposed food or the food that, the, that either the supermarkets or, or even the bigger food chain uh, logistics cannot use, and they, they would other elsewhere throw it away. Now it comes to this center. And from there, it's uh, then a uh, uh, challenge to different NGOs, uh, different uh, churches, different actors who, who will give the food aid for our residents. And, and we have done this very efficient way of trying to use this, um, this uh, uh, food uh, most efficiently also to cut the, um, uh, to, to, or the guarantee the cold chain uh, so, so we don't have to throw anything away uh, before the smaller actors, when they are each one get, getting the uh, the food from the local supermarket, uh, they also couldn't have that kind of a very efficient chain. Um, and and we have developed it together with the with the different NGOs. And I think it's very important uh, green initiative as as well here in Helsinki. 
then um, maybe some words still about the mental health, because I think it is an important, uh, very important, uh, has, it has been already for some years. We know that, for instance, uh, it is the most important or the biggest uh, reason why, why young adults uh, in Finland uh, receive uh, pensions if they cannot study or work it's due because of uh, mental health uh, problems. Uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you also see that uh, different mental health um, problems uh, have arised. It have, people also are also demanding different services and, and the public sector uh, and we as a city are responsible of organizing all health services for our, our citizens we also haven't been able um, to, to fully um, have all those services that people need. Um, and we have realized that, especially in the low threshold mental health services, where you can come for a discussion support, also receive uh, um, uh, guidance and, and, and uh, counseling from psychologists and, and other professionals, um, also to get some uh, therapy in, in case you ne need more. But, but what is most important is that people can seek their services and, and receive the first, uh, uh, first meeting by themselves. They can, if they need the time, they can uh, book the time and, and uh, there is no uh, doctor saying that you are not uh, you are not sick enough, you, you, we, we won't take you here. And, and this kind of a low threshold mental services that we have now two in Helsinki, yeah, we are going to have them um, in each part of, of Helsinki to build more of them. And, and we, um, we as Greens, we have been very much fighting uh, for the resources of this uh, and, and, and also that they will be, they started from the, not the better, better of areas, but the less better of areas in, in, in Helsinki, that they are important kind of services also in the post-corona times, as we know that people are very, um, very stressed and, 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 and of course the, the economic situations also bring a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, problems uh, for the mind. Yes. Then um, here is a picture from the, from the future. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we will have the elections uh, coming in, in April. Uh, we will look very optimistic to the, to the future. We want to be the, uh, the most human uh, city uh, guiding people through uh, and out of, of this COVID situation. Um, we know that we both need actions and, and real um, real actions uh, for the climate change. We know that it, it was the most worrying thing for the Helsinki city residents before the COVID crisis. When we have done some surveys, what do people uh, uh, fear the most? People feared uh, for the climate change. Uh, also in Finland, of course, we won't have the winters every year because we can see uh, that it is, it unfortunately, it also affects us uh, and, and uh, for us then the winter means very dark and very, very long um, time before, without snow. So, so it's something very concrete for, the, for, for our residents. So we need the real action. We need also political um, uh, decisions that, um, that are really concrete and, and also that uh, take people themselves uh, seriously and, and, and uh, I think, for instance, these examples that I brought from mental health, I think that's something that people really feel that they, they would need um, the, the cities to be, to, to be very active. I think other, other aspects like uh, how to find uh, uh, sustainable economies uh, for young people who now when, when, when many of them have lost jobs uh, in the cities are of course very important parts and, and Helsinki has a as a program, how to come out from the from the COVID crisis, and and we of course uh, uh, Greens try to try in the elections to be uh, the biggest party and and then lead this this program also in the coming four years. So 
I will probably end here. Here is one picture from Helsinki. I hope we could have organized this here, for instance, in the uh, new Central City Library, Audi, uh, which is one of the beautiful examples of, of Helsinki's architecture, but hopefully maybe next year or in the coming years, we will also meet in, in these wonderful public uh, spaces that are open to everyone, um, that, uh, that create hope and, and also that are sustainable, like this Audi uh, built a lot of with uh, wood uh, in, uh, structures. So hopefully you, one day you will have a chance to, to visit Helsinki as well. But very happy to, to also answer questions and, and, and also uh, discuss on these topics or others that uh, this presentation may be erased. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this very uh, splendid uh, talk about some uh, elements of uh, policies of the city of Helsinki. And indeed, there are a few questions already in the chat. Um, the first one is uh, Linda from UK says, I love Helsinki. She has a question on energy policy. Uh, you Suddenly you said you will close the coal uh, plants. And so the question is, are tidal wave or geothermal or heat pumps viable options for Finland? So if you close the coal plant, how will you uh, yeah, produce renewable energy and heat? Yes, uh, tide doesn't help us very much. We have a Baltic Sea that doesn't have yeah. a tide. <laughs> That's why I had a difficulty of understanding it since yeah. we don't have it. Uh, it's more like a, like a lake, although it is a sea um, with a semi-salty water. Uh, we will use, um, we will have um, numerous different sources. Um, we will also uh, use uh, wind, um, wind power to some extent. Um, also the heat coming from the from the earth. I'm sorry, as a sociologist, yeah. I'm not sure about all the terms. Maybe that you didn't know. <laughs> that's what's called geothermal heat. Ge geothermal heat, yes. Yeah. Um, then a lot of, um, we have a, um, we have a carbon neutral Helsinki um, plan. That's also available in the internet. Uh, I'm sure also in English you will find it. Um, it has more than 140 actions, how we are going to make that energy uh, change. So, so there is also a lot of actions how to, um, how to uh, make the, the houses um, more, uh, how does it, conserve better energy. Yeah, insulated. <laughs> insulated uh, and, and uh, a lot of many actions, but, but from the, from the um, how we're going to um, not to use the coal, there are many different, so how to use the geothermal energy, how to use also, um, 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 what is it, um, um, I'm, I'm, unfortunately I don't know this in English at all, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, different uh, power networks, how to make them uh, to work better, <laughs> not yeah. to conceive. Smart and, and, and different pumps, pump systems, and 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 a lot of uh, other other challenges. But yes, uh, look it up also in the, in the internet if you are more interested how we are going to use it. Hannah already put the link in the chat, so that's perfect. Yes. Great. And what we actually did, uh, we did have this Helsinki Energy Challenge uh, competition, where we um, we made it also public that anybody who will have a good a uh, solution that would work in Helsinki for uh, for we have a lot of um, central heating um, system that uses uh, that we produce both uh, energy uh, for the heating and 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 then also electricity. Um, if if we would have uh, good solutions, we will also uh, give prizes, and that also means uh, money prizes for those uh, who will uh, who who will find good solutions because we know that if that solution would be something that is is working for us it would probably also be working for many other 
uh, cities, not only in Europe, but we know, for instance, that in China, they are also looking for, for better solutions. So if you want to follow Helsinki Energy Challenge, we don't have the, the medal yet, uh, but we have received the, the um, uh, competitive, those who want to compete, they have already submitted their, their ideas. So let's see. Okay, thanks. Um, another question uh, here is about uh, civil participation. How do you combine this policy of sustainable development with really civic participation? Yes, we have focused a lot on, the, on participation because uh, we know that if people don't feel that they are part of the part of the city, part of the city policies, part of uh, of of the place, uh, um, then then probably we we lose that trust that is very very important. Um, this last four years, for instance, we started this participatory approach uh, that we have this uh, participatory budgeting. So all the all the residents, everybody who's uh, over 12, so also the kids, um, can initiate uh, things uh, that they think cities should do. And then we had a, a, had a voting system. Uh, for the first term, we put 4.4 million euros for it. Now for the second one, we made it a bit longer, but we doubled also the, the money. So it's 8.8 .8 million. Um, I think that is also something, a low threshold way of, of trying to get your idea, um, uh, trying to, to also um, get that uh, realized in, in the city. But, but it's not, of course, not the only one. I think very important part is in the services, how we are, how we are going to take the people um, to, to really design the services. For instance, the elderly care, uh, how we are not coming from up from here, but really trying to find solutions and, and make the service design that people uh, find that it's working for them. So we have put a lot of uh, approach for, for this kind of design, designs by the expert and, and, uh, and, and peer support and, and things that uh, would uh, also increase people's participation and, that, and, and their feeling of belonging. But of course, it's a very long, long way how to how to do it because there is also the long, long tradition of bureaucracy doing some things up here, and and uh, it it really means uh, a lot of a lot of effort. But we have a, a whole program for the participatory approach, and and I'm very happy of those steps that we have taken now these last years. Okay, thanks. Uh, there's one question about. Uh how cities are financed. Uh, do you have a lot of local taxes or are you dependent on a federal tax system? Very important question. And, and I know that we are very different in, in different parts of Europe in this. In Finland, we have a, uh, the cities and the municipalities have a lot of uh, um, self-governance. So we can, uh, we have the uh, city tax that uh, we tax from both from income, so people's income, and also from companies. And then of course also from uh, properties uh, and, and the land. Uh, so, so we have different sources of, of uh, taxing and then financing these services. Of course, we have also a lot of rep um, uh, responsibilities. We need to organize the transportation, um, everything in the infrastructure, but then also the services, the whole education system, not the universities, but everything under, under the, the uh, so, so to the secondary school as well. Um, then the whole health services and social services. So also we finance the, the university hospitals, um, wh which we organize with the, with the metropolitan area, not, not only Helsinki ourselves, but we organize a lot of services that in other, other countries of, the, of Europe, you might have a very different uh, social security system or, or even, um, even uh, very different, different ones uh, financed by insurances or, or like that. So, so we have a lot of source of income. We are not that dependent on the, on the, from the national level, 
Um, but uh, of course, we're dependent on, on the way that, uh, that people want to live here and that they have salaries and, and also, of course, that uh, companies want to stay here. So, so I think it also guides us to, to also work better that uh, both, both uh, people uh, find, uh, find work uh, uh, and, and can be in that part of also financing the system. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, it was great to, to uh, read that uh, city bank system is very successful. And then um, my question is, how do you do that? How do you convince people to drive their bike in winter? Because maybe the winters are not so cold anymore as they used to be. But I guess you have cold temperatures, you have snow. And so how do you motivate people to keep on biking? Yes, very good question. I did bicycle still two weeks ago, but then we got so heavy snow, one meter snow here in, in Helsinki. So now I haven't been using my bike for, for a couple of weeks, but it's possible because we have, we have also the, the most important routes are, we know people know, and, and that's guaranteed that you know that uh, they, they will have also, um, they will take care of before the work, work day be, begins. And you can really also bicycle through the, through the winter. Um, that of course create we need a whole new system for for it. I know it's a, a bit challenging than in in many other uh, parts of the world. Uh, that city bike system we don't have a full year. We know that uh, with the snow and, and with our <laughs> harsh conditions it wouldn't work. But it, it's uh, it, it's from I think from April till October or so, uh, if I remember right. Maybe till until November. So, so most of the year we have the city city bike system working. I think uh, what was uh, what has been very important is that people um, people know that um, we we try to have those good conditions for bicycling, so they will be safe. Uh, they don't need to be afraid of the cars, and also of course that also those who are walking don't need to be afraid of the bicyclers. So we have um, started a very big infrastructure development and, and taking, of course, example from Denmark, uh, Netherlands, uh, other parts of, uh, of uh, Europe where you have done it uh, much earlier than we have, uh, that to have a really good bike lanes uh, and, and, and that would be people also would know how to, to, to use it. Uh, um, but it's, it is, of course, a bit challenging with the weather conditions uh, and also the distances, since we are not that densely populated, so, so that there is also some, some distances, but at the same time, uh, beautiful uh, uh, forests and, and, and uh, places uh, to, to go. For instance, my, I live in the, in the northern part of Helsinki. I have nine kilometers to the city hall, so I, will have, I, I have almost whole route through the central park which in finland means forest not, not a park and uh, only in the end uh, uh, some one kilometer before the city city hall i i will have the first uh, um, place where i need to stop for the uh, city lights so so um, i think uh, it is possible and it's it's uh, you have you just have to have a vision and and you have to have a uh, a, a lot of political will um, to do it uh, the way that people also uh, feel that it's it, it is um, they they agree with it and and biking has been very popular this last year uh, with the COVID uh, as as I imagine in many other uh, cities as well. Okay, thanks. Um, of course, you made us a bit jealous. Uh, if a, cycling to the park, which is actually a first. Uh, we have one question here from Crystal. I think she lives in Antwerp and she's uh, wondering how do you encourage people to take public transport? So, um, yes, very important question. Um, well, with the, um, uh, I think uh, what we have done for a long time is that we have invested a lot in the in new tram lines. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I forgot to mention that in the, my presentation, very important part of our 
uh, infrastructure development. Not, so not only, of course, bike lanes, but but also new tram lines, uh, new um, well, and other modes of rain uh, railroads. So so also we we made a. Um, our metro line, uh, we invested a lot on in, in the new lines of metro, um, new tram lines uh, that will um, not all go to, how to say, uh, also horizontal lines that has been always the problem in Helsinki because everything has gone to the to the city center very well, but not, not horizontally. Um, and then of course, trying to, um, trying to also um, uh, make uh, the change possibilities easy uh, comfortable so and and uh, and try to of course keep also the the, the tickets uh, not too expensive uh, very difficult now with the COVID uh, since uh, also our public transportation is in in very big problems uh, because people have stayed home haven't used the public transportation since also many of them have feared that they will get infection from from there uh, so try how, how to um, build um, that that uh, use and trust uh, again uh, how to build that back uh, very very uh, important part but I think when you have modern modern trams and and uh, you know you know that uh, they are working very well and and um, going on time and etc people also um, Feel that it's it's much worth uh, than than taking your own own car. Uh, like I said, also I think what, that if we can say to the uh, residents that this is also the climate uh, very important for the climate. Uh, I think our residents are also quite pro progressive and and they understand it. Okay, thanks. Then now there are a few questions related to what I could call. Uh, politics and the political situation. So uh, Marie is interested in what are the different factors that have led to the rise of the Green Party in Finland because you're actually very strong so we are a bit jealous. So tell us your secrets. <laughs> um, I think there are many uh, explanations to it. Uh, well of course the party system in Finland is a bit different than, than in any, any country. For instance, we don't have a liberal party uh, uh, like in many many other uh, countries. Some some political um, political um, uh, scientists say that that is one part of the explanation that uh, we have uh, the, the biggest parties have been the moderate conservatives, so, social democrats, then quite big uh, also kind of agricultural party, but there has been that kind of progressive liberal. Uh, party lacking and, and Greens have also uh, been uh, from looking at uh, from the values and, and, and that uh, um, we have been very, very well fit into that. Um, I think in many social policies we, uh, we are considered that we um, have a lot of also um, in common to the, to the more to the left, uh, thinking of the social action and and uh, and then uh, of course in many many aspects we we ourselves see that we are there in the center um, because uh, we are not we are not uh, um, we don't have also that history of of, of uh, from that left uh, right uh, axis um, but I think uh, we have been able to work with uh, with the different parties we in Finland we don't have a dual we have a multi party. Uh, governments always at the at the moment we are in the in the national government uh, um, the the foreign minister being Pekka Havisto uh, minister for inner um, interior is uh, Maria Ohisala who is our chairperson in 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 Green Party and then we have also the minister of environment Krista Mikkonen and and now this uh, coalition is is. Uh, Led by the social democrats, but we have been also in the governments uh, who are led by the, for instance, moderate conservatives or, or the, kind of the central, the agricultural party. Um, so I think uh, um, there are different reasons. Uh, of course, we ourselves think that we have been able to have good uh, poly political uh, aims, and and we have been something that people trust and 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 feel that uh, we we can. 
uh, have good action and, and, and people can trust us. Uh, I, I think as a politician, you all, of course, uh, you want to believe that is a very important part of, of, of our <laughs> success as well. And, and in Helsinki, we try to, of course, uh, be successful in the, in the future as well. Okay, thanks. There's one question uh, related to the political situation. How about populism in Helsinki? Uh, we have a populist party in, in Finland, uh, but in Helsinki they are not actually that big. At least they haven't been so far. Um, they are the maybe fifth, sixth, sixth biggest party, so, so not, not many um, city councillors in the, in the city council. But nationally, they have been growing uh, rapidly. Sometimes in the polls, they are even the biggest party at the moment. Uh, and uh, they have a very worrying, uh, very anti-immigration front. And, and, and they're uh, very often what they aim are some opposite what we do, uh, thinking of, for instance, with the, uh, with the immigration policies or, or even with the climate, they are very, very much against uh, uh, progressive climate action. Uh, so of course that is worrying us uh, a lot um, uh, here also in the in the Nordic countries that we, we for I think for many years we thought that populism is some, not something that we will get. But yes, it's it's happening also here. Very worrying trends uh, coming from from different parts of Europe and, and definitely we need to especially I think we need to fight back with the with that kind of a rhetoric um, that uh, that is also using, well, not if not lies, but at least uh, using uh, semi lies and, and very similar rhetoric as we, as we saw in the U.S. So it is it is very worrying. And is that also uh, connected to a kind of a divide between the cities and the countryside? Um, not not uh, directly. Say they also get a lot of a um, um, lot of voters from from smaller cities also from bigger cities but I think especially from from men especially um, they they have now gained more of the voters from the kind of far right uh, they, they are not a new party they were actually old party and and a bit different uh, um, they have also gone to the to the right more than they used to used to go. So, so very worrying development uh, also here in in Finland. And we, I know also in other Nordic countries we we see this uh, these parties rising. Okay, but of course there are also strong progressive parties like the Greens. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. So I want to finish with the last question. Uh, oh. Here's someone, uh, Linda, asking a last question in the chat. So, interesting question. Is it possible for Finland to be self-sufficient in food? Uh, well, if we would uh, eat uh, like our ancestors ate, probably we would be uh, self-sufficient, but then we wouldn't have a lot of uh, those fruits and vegetables that we, we get. So, um, we have, uh, we also in Finland, uh, have a lot of uh, agricultural support. Uh, we, of course, as the Greens, have tried to guide it also to be more sustainable. So uh, thinking of the animals' conditions and also uh, thinking of, uh, of uh, well, pesticides and all that that is used uh, for, for the Finnish agriculture. But yes, we depend, of course, very much on the, on the import as, as we are here in the the growth season is very short uh, also in, in Finland. Okay, thanks uh, for, ans for answering this last question. Uh, I really want to thank you for being with us. And uh, as I said, I hope to come back uh, to Helsinki and I will bring some Belgian chocolates. Great. <laughs> You're welcome anytime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, maybe also something to add is that, which I find also very important about connecting in a sustainable way. As you probably know, there are really uh, serious talks about uh, reintroducing a night train between Brussels and Malmö. So that would already make it a bit more realistic to uh, 
come to Helsinki. So I would say many thanks also for the people uh, joining with us, very relevant questions, and uh, hopefully we see you in the next uh, live public meeting. So thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you everyone for wonderful questions. Thank you. Dirk, can I nog even iets zeggen? Ja, zeker. Um, my son lives in Helsinki and he is very active in the cultural field. And I think that could be also one of the aspects of the success of the Green Party, because also in this field you are, as I feel it, much more um, yeah, um, active than, than here, the politicians in Belgium. My oh, guess. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it is part of, of um, uh, a green policy also, eh? the cultural aspect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, well, we have found some recipe that, uh, that we have been able to combine that uh, environmental uh, sustainability and social uh, justice and, and, and how to combine that. We, we have been able to it, but of course all the political systems and scenes are so, so different, so... Yeah, so but like, for instance, the library system, that you have libraries in every small part of the city, it's, uh, uh, I think it, it's very important because also this um, enables people to, to get involved in, in, uh, in the cultural field. Eh? Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thanks for this great uh, last, uh, yeah, we shouldn't forget the importance of culture, of course, especially in these uh, difficult times where people are isolated. So thank you very much and hopefully see you at the next webinar. So keep an eye on our website uh, of the Green European Foundation or Oikos Think Tank.